DWBR of the Philippine Broadcasting Service. 104.3 on FM. Music and talk. Nice and easy. The time is 12 o'clock. Good afternoon. Here is the 12 o'clock edition of the Network News. The number of Zamboanga City residents affected by gun battles between government forces and the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, gunmen had reached 82,000. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC, said the crisis had affected 16,533 families, or 82,106 people from 14 villages. The NDRR, or rather the NDRRMC said 24 evacuation centers had been set up to serve 13,028 families or 67,845 people. The NDRRMC said the Zamboanga City Crisis Management Center is continuously cleaning the evacuation centers to maintain the residents' health and sanitation. According to the NDRRMC, 87 were killed, including 75 from the MNLF, 6 from the armed forces, 3 from the National Police Force, and 7 civilians. At least 165 were wounded, including 86 soldiers, 12 police personnel, and 67 civilians. Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, or ARMM Governor Mujib Hataman, predicts that atrocities in Zamboanga and in other areas between the government forces and the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, may be over in the next two days. Hataman said the local government is trying to bring back to normalcy the government services in areas the ARMM affected by the conflict. He said government forces have recovered a large area earlier controlled by the MNLF. Well, patuloy pa rin ang tension, pero hoping uh, malapit na uh, halos papatapos na ito. At uh, karamihan sa mga hostages ay na-rescue rin ng ating security forces. At yung mga lugar na dating pinagkukutaan ay na-take over na rin ng ating sandatang lakas. Well, tingnan natin from now on until mga after two days. Kasi halimbawa sa case ng Basilan, uh, kahapon nga, nagpa-meeting din tayo doon uh, kasama yung Crisis Management Committee at City Mayor ng Lamitan City. Uh, nag-recommend na tayo na i-back to normal at uh, yung de- Department of Education natin ay pinababa na ng order para mag-resume ang mga klase sa buong probinsya. Hataman is confident that the MNLF-induced hostilities would not affect in any way the ongoing peace negotiations between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or the MILF. Hataman was interviewed live by Anselmo Baisa in his radio program, Patrol ng Bayan. Well, ang tingin ko naman, hindi naman apektado yung peace talk sa pagitan ng GPH at MILF, and in fact, Andon sila ngayon sa Kuala Lumpur, uh, patuloy ang pag-uusap dahil dapat madistinguish natin na itong kaguluhan na nangyayari dito ay dulot ng uh, kaguluhan na, ng MNLF faction, Miswari faction, at wala namang kaugnayan sa MILF. Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao Governor Mujib Hataman. Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF Dabao Chairman Rolando Olami went to one of the malls where Monday night's blasts occurred to show the MNLF was not involved. Olamit said he went, went there lest authorities suspect the MNLF of involvement in the Dabao blast. Shortly after the crisis involving a standoff between the government and the MNLF forces in Zamboanga City broke out last week, Davao City Mayor Rodrigo Duterte had talked to MNLF leaders in the area and stressed he does not want trouble. The police are still determining the type of explosive used in Monday night's movie house blasts. 
Initial investigation showed the first explosion occurred at a movie house in the SM Mall. The second occurred at the Gaisano Mall. A total of 151 hostages had been freed from the hands of the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF Breakaway Group, as of this morning. Alvin Baltazar reports. According to DILG Secretary Maroas, majority of the number of released hostages happened last night, which was recorded to as much as 117 individuals. At present, all released hostages are undergoing the needed process, as Roas pointed out that they must make sure as to who are the legitimate hostages or not. All released hostages are undergoing tactical debriefing, which, according to Roas, is a part of the standard operating procedures to ensure that no MNL probe elements could penetrate the legitimate hostages. Alvin Baldassar for PBS News. The Philippine Embassy in Washington said the Philippines is now the first Asian exporter of bananas to the United States after the arrival last week of the Bukidnon Cavendish in Los Angeles, California. The embassy said the 7,047 metric tons of Highland bananas arrived at the port of Long Beach near Los Angeles on September 9. These were transferred to a ripening warehouse and will be made available in stores this week. According to agriculture attaché Jocelyn Havelosa, officials of the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service of the United States Department of Agriculture have worked with the Philippine Bureau of Plant Industry to ensure the shipment makes the United States phytosanitary hurdles. The bananas will be marketed in the United States under the Sweetio brand. A total of 87 individuals have been killed in the continuing crisis in Zamboanga City. Again, Alvin Baltazar reports. Latest report by the Armed Forces of the Philippines disclosed that 71 got neutralized on the part of the Miswari Breakaway Group as nine others are wounded. Seven civilians have been killed on the skirmish while 39 have been injured on the part of the government troops. Six soldiers have been killed as 86 sustained injuries, while three deaths were recorded to have been killed on the part of PNP, and 12 others are wounded. 64 MNLF members, on the other hand, have been arrested and voluntarily surrendered to the authorities. President Sagala said that what they are concerned is the safety of the remaining hostages as tension still exists. Alvin Baldassar for PBS News. Cebu Archbishop Jose Palma says a visit to Cebu last week of a team from the Vatican paves the way for the visit of Pope Francis to Cebu during the International Eucharistic Congress, or IEC, in January 2016. Palma, however, also said they cannot preempt the Pope in announcing the said visit to the Philippines, though Cebu has gained the nod from the Vatican team. Pontifical, the Pontifical Committee for IEC Executive Secretary, Father Vittorre Bocardi, noted that Cebu is a good choice, stressing there is no need of a rich town or a town in the western area. Bocardi said what is needed in the preparations for the week-long event is a Christian community that is ready and willing to receive pilgrims coming from all parts of the world. Archbishop Piero Marini, the Pontifical Permanent Committee for IEC President and a member of the Vatican team, said the IEC is held in different countries every four years. Among the sites visited by the Vatican team were the small temple at the South Road properties in Cebu City, site of the National Thanksgiving Mass for the canonization of San Pedro Calunzon and the Cebu International Convention Center in Mandawe City. Despite the crises in Zamboanga City with no end in sight, the government assures that the armed forces of the Philippines' morale remains high. More from Alvin Baltazar. According to Department of National Defense Chief Walter Gasmin, the presence of President Noinoy Aquino just recently has contributed to boost the morale of the soldiers in Sambanga City. Gasmin added that the President's gesture, who personally gave soldiers cell phone load, added to the high spirits of the military troops there, were still going against the MNLF. On the other hand, Secretary Gasmin said that they are now focused in the safety 
of the hostages who believe to be now are at less than a hundred. Alvin Baltasar for PBS News. Tropical depression Odette continues with its western mo or westward movement and inched closer to Tugegarao City in Cagayan early today. Pagasa said the weather disturbance was estimated 830 kilometers east of Tugegarao City as of 4 o'clock this morning with maximum center winds of 55 kilometers per hour. Pagasa forecaster Connie Dadiba said... Tropical depression Odette may linger in the Philippine area of responsibility at le until at least Saturday night. Dadibas added that tropical depression Odette will continue to enhance the southwest monsoon while within the Philippine area of responsibility, which in turn will bring rain to central and southern Luzon and the Visayas. Tropical depression Odette is forecast to move west at 7 kilometers per hour. Pagasa said Metropolitan Manila and the rest of Luzon and the Visayas may expect cloudy skies with light to moderate rain showers and thunderstorms. <laughs> Senate President Franklin Drillon has ruled out the possibility of the Senate taking custody of Senators Juan Ponce Enrile, Jose Estrada, and Ramon Revilla Jr., the three senators are now facing plunder charges in connection with a 10 billion peso pork barrel fund scam. More from Jojo Ismail. Dillon said that the upper chamber would not seek custody of the senators is placing that, that the matter was for the courts to decide, as in the case of former President Gordon Macapagal Arroyo, whether they will be suspended when they are trial court or when they are contracted is a matter that would be studied by the Senate Dillon said. The Senate President also said that the upper chamber would not provide any support for the senators, saying they were capable of defending themselves. Joe uh, Drillon assured that the possible suspension of Andrina Estrada Revilla would not affect the functions of the chamber. This is a collegial body and we will continue to function as a collegial body in fact. We will function, all the committees are still there, the committees will continue to work, the Senate President said. For BBS News, George Ismael, Senate. The Philippine National Red Cross Zamboanga del Sur chapter encouraged the public to send donation of cooked foods such as rice, noodles, sardines, water, as well as clothing, blankets, and mats to ensure the continuous supply for the mounting numbers of evacuees in Zamboanga City. Monetary donations will also be accepted and will be properly issued corresponding official receipt from the office. Donations should be coursed through the PRC office in Dao, Pagadian City. In the meantime, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, has assured regular provision of food and assistance to the rising number of displaced families. The DSWD said it tapped local catering groups and food service providers to ensure a regular provision of food to the increasing number of evacuees inside the Joaquin Enriquez Sports Complex. Labor and Employment Secretary Rosalinda Dabaldos has announced the new rules of Jordan in facilitating departure of domestic workers from the kingdom. Melanie Valdos reports. The Labor Chief said Jordan government has directed all foreign domestic workers who are about to exit the country to visit the Kingdom's residency and borders department five working days prior to the date of his or her departure. Valdos explained the move was initiated in order to legalize the domestic worker status and ensure that Jordan's judicial authorities have not issued any travel ban against him or her. The new law states that a published labor-related case of a foreign domestic worker who is about to leave Jordan will be reviewed by systemic civil courts while security or criminal case will be handled by the Public Security Directorate of the Ministry of Interior. While if the domestic worker does not have any case publication, the Minister of Interior will decide whether he or she is cleared for departure after an endorsement from the Public secu uh, or Security Directorate two days after the receipt of endorsement. Melanie Valdez reporting for PBS. 
Zamboanga Police Director Chiquico Malayo has been held hostage by the Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF in Barangay Mampang. This report was just submitted by PBS correspondent Edwin Helenal from the Zamboanga Peninsula. The double taxation agreement will further spur the Philippines' economic relationship with Germany through a reduced tax burden on Filipino and German investors. Again, Melanie Valdos reports. The move will also enhance mobility by directly benefiting citizens residing in each other's countries. Meanwhile, the finance department cited that if Germans in the Philippines avail the tax relief, this would potentially stimulate technology transfer from Germany to the Philippines. To the double taxation agreement, both countries believe it is an important step towards elevating bilateral relations to a new level. Melanie Valdes reporting for PBS News. And with that, we conclude the 12 o'clock edition of the Network News. This is Bon Vibar reporting. This is Business Radio.